You're listening to the Small and Supercharged podcast with Rhea Freeman, episode 202. Well, hello and welcome to this episode of the Small and Supercharged podcast. It is a solo with me. And today we're going to answer a question about endorsements, testimonials, reviews. How do you ask for them without being weird? This is a podcast that I think would be really useful for brands, obviously. But also if you're an influencer and you're looking to maybe work with additional brands, maybe you're looking for content for your own website or blog, it's useful to get that endorsement. And of course, if you have a podcast, it's really useful for that too. And actually on that note, um, I wanted to give a bit of a shout out to the lovely Foxy Equestrian who have very recently left a really lovely review for me on the Apple um, podcast platform. So huge thank you to you Foxy Equestrian, really, really appreciate it. If anyone else would like to leave a review, um, the whole thing about it not being weird feels a little bit weird to me doing this now, but hey, in for a penny. If you would like to rate and review the podcast, I'd be incredibly grateful. Whatever platform you are listening on, you can click, tap, whatever on the number of stars you think it's worth. Please go big um, and write a review too. But anyway, we're going to help you now. How can you ask for reviews, endorsements, and testimonials without being weird. Now, first of all, why do you even need to do this? Why do you need to bother asking for testimonials? Because we know you're brilliant. I know you're brilliant. But is it really arrogant to say to people, I need you to tell people how brilliant I am? And I'm going to say, no, it isn't. Because whilst I know you're brilliant, how does somebody else know? So maybe it's somebody who is looking at your product, let's say you have a product-based business and they're looking at a product and they're comparing you to three or four different product um, suppliers, retailers, let's say, and you're all about the same price, you're, you all got similar delivery terms, um, how do you decide which one to go for? Now, there's lots of different reasons you might pick one over the other, but Often, I don't know about you, but if I'm in any doubt, I tend to look at the reviews. If I'm deciding between different products on that well-known website, Amazon, if I'm looking at different products and I don't really know anything about them, um, say I'm looking for, what have I got my desk at the moment? Um, I've got a, a bottle of um, pet cleaner, it, clean and safe disinfectant cleaner deodorizer for dog accidents. So it's a shining example into my life. Um, but when I was looking for that, I'm not so surprised. I don't know much about pet disinfectant for when your puppy pees in your office. I don't know. So how do you find the right product for you? Well, you absolutely look at the prices, you look at the quantities, look at delivery um, prices. But then you also have a look at what do people say about it? Is it easy to use? Is it this, is it that or the other? And when you start to look at the reviews, you start to pick up information that you might not have just gleaned from a product description. Maybe some people say it wipes really easily. It doesn't leave a residue. I'm still on the disinfectant. It smells really nice. Um, it's, it's, it does a good job. You know, the dog doesn't pee there again or whatever it is. So when we think about how we use reviews and how we utilise them, and again, from a service provider point of view as well, if there's someone that I'm interested in to help me with a, a project, let's say, I don't know, let's say an accountant or a graphic designer or a service-based business that I'm potentially thinking of working with, a photographer. If I don't know them personally, I would go and look at their reviews. Now, I'm not necessarily looking for people to say, oh, this person is the most amazing person in the whole entire world. I love them so much. I'm looking for the detail. I'm looking for the things in that testimonial that allow me to relate to it. So, um, let's go for an accountant, um, something like, let's just go Jane, hi to all the Janes listening, I know I always pick on Janes, not pick on, just use their name as an example, but let's say Jane, so um, I've worked with Jane for 10 years, now that's useful because they've got that long, you know, that, that loyalty there, um, and I like the way she's always efficient, and she always explains things to me in plain English, and I never feel stupid, well that would tick all the boxes for me, I like efficiency, I like people to not patronise me and to not use jargon to speak in plain English and I like the loyalty aspect. Now if Jane was writing about herself she would say you know she could say oh you know I do describe things in plain English but if you've got someone else saying that as well it's that proof element 
which is really, really valuable for so many different things. Again, with a photographer, if this photographer is showing you their beautiful, beautiful pictures, but the testimonial says, Jane, let's just stick with Jane. Everyone's Jane today. Jane made me feel at ease. She had a great eye for good locations. Um, and I'm really, really delighted with the results. I think, oh gosh, because I'm quite nervous about photographs. So if this person made that person feel at ease, that's going to work for me. If maybe for the, the photography side, they're saying, oh, she was very efficient, this, this and this. For me, that might even put me off slightly. I like efficiency, but I also like to feel if it's something that I'm a bit nervous about, that I've got that time to think as well. But then for someone else who wants to just bang through them and knows what they're doing, the efficiency angle will be absolutely up there. So think about what you get from testimonials, because that should help to reinforce the importance of them and the value that they can bring to what you're doing. And that, that can be really, really significant. It's not just saying, oh, I love the product. It's why do you love the product? Why is this person great at what they do? Why did they really help you? So when you ask, and we're going to talk about ask, asking as well, it's important to keep those things in mind. Um, it's the detail. It's the detail that we wouldn't write about ourselves because we can't write it about ourselves. Um, if it's product, you know, it can really help them stand out which one is the best fit for a person. If we use the, the product example again, maybe someone's trying to choose between six different products on your one website. So you're not being pitched against different um, retailers. So people are maybe looking at the service and the, the service aspects of the testimonials and the um, delivery times. Maybe they're literally looking at the reviews for each different product to work out which one's best for them. So let's say we're thinking of something like t-shirts. quite warm today, so I'm on t-shirts. Um, you watch. By the time you listen to this, it'll be throwing it down. But it's warm as I'm recording. So let's say you're looking at a few different t-shirts. And maybe someone talks about how breathable the, the fabric is, how wicking it is, how it doesn't cling to them, how it's very flattering. Um, maybe one talks about a longer body length. Maybe one talks about a shorter body length. Maybe one talks about a deeper V or a shorter arm length than they expected. Now, for some people, all these things will appeal to them more. I personally like a longer t-shirt length because I'm just generally quite a long person. Um, but for some others, they may, they may prefer a much shorter length or even a cropped idea. And it is quite difficult to gauge sometimes just through imagery and just through product information. So... Having those testimonials, having that information, having those reviews is important. Now, there are various systems, particularly if you've got a product-based business, that ask for reviews. I get quite a few emails when I purchase things that say, oh, have you reviewed this product? And I have to say, it angers me a little bit. Um, not the ones that ask me once, but you know, I'm sure you've had it before. The, the repetitive ones. And I'm thinking, what? And I don't necessarily think that's a great way to do it. I think it's fine to say, oh, you bought a product, we hope you love it. But like personalise that if you can. Um, but I'm talking more about the, the, the testimonials that maybe aren't a direct response to, you know, don't, don't go through a, an automated system. So let's take one example. Let's say you've had an email from somebody or you've had a really, really lovely direct message from somebody Maybe they've said that your product service is second to none or your delivery is super, super quick or that they're delighted with their whatever it is and why. That's lovely. And you should absolutely message them back and say, thanks so much. We're really grateful for your business and we're really delighted that you're happy with the service, product, whatever. But then use that. So could you then definitely ask them permission always, but message them back and say, thanks so much. Really, really pleased you think about that. Could I be really cheeky and ask to use that as a testimonial on my website? You know, and see what they say. They might say no. They might not get back to you. But most of the time, I bet they'll say yes. Because what tends to happen with, with all the businesses that we run is that we don't really know there's a problem until someone complains. You don't get normally, you don't normally get as many, oh, you're amazing emails as you do as this product's rubbish emails because you just don't. People have got standards they expect from products and when something matches or exceeds, they tend to think great. So if someone's gone out of their way to tell you and to thank you, the chances are they're probably going to be up for it. So I would just ask them, just ask them if they, if you know, if you can use their words, if you can use that testimonial. 
What you can then do with that is you can put it on your website, you can make it into a social media post, you can do like a testimonial Tuesday is quite a handy little day based theme that quite a lot of people use. You don't have to, you can do a testimonial whenever you want, but it's quite useful. Maybe you put it on the individual product page that goes with that product, depending on, you know, what you do. Um, but I think that, that it's that's a really, really simple way of saying to people who reach out to you with some really lovely words, could I use this as a testimonial? Because they've already done the work. So you're already making yourself more appealing, I think, because they're not having to do any extra work. Now, the next thing you can do is you can promote the fact that you are looking for reviews. You can put this in your social media posts. You can say, you know, we're looking, we need you, we need your help. We are trying to increase our reviews and the information we provide on the products or services that we offer. Um, and we would love to get your feedback on what you've what you've had. What did you particularly love? What were you surprised about? And you can ask things like that. You can also ask for this if you send out an email newsletter, because that's a really great way of getting people and reaching out to them because they've already decided that they want to subscribe to you and they want to hear what you've got to say. Now, whether you incentivize them or not, I'm not sure. I, I feel like the answer, the obvious answer is yes, because we want to get these reviews in. They can be really, really useful. Maybe you run some kind of campaign where you obviously don't say what they've got to say in their review, but you know, you, you shout out, you give a prize to, you give a voucher to people who do write a decent testimonial. Um, and this needs to be more than a love the product testimonial. You want that, that, you want that information there that's gonna make the difference. So maybe you do select someone at random that leaves a review each month and they get a little thank you from you, a voucher or something like that. That's up to you. But I think, you know, not playing on at all, but making people aware of how important it is to get these reviews um, and asking them, that's something that so many of us, me included, don't do. Um, we just don't ask. Having it as your, you know, a footer in your email saying, like what we do, we'd love a review. You can have that, it rhymes. You know, it, it's, it's so simple and it's really, it can be really effective at getting what you want back. Now, of course, people do lead busy lives. So even if people say they will leave you a review, they don't always. But a way to perhaps jog people's memory is make sure that you thank people that do and that you do some work to promote those people that do as well. This can be really effective if you've got a really decent following on social media and the people who are reviewing are perhaps looking to grow theirs. So you essentially give them a shout out and say, thanks, Jess. Oh, change names. Thanks, Jess, for your review. So pleased you love our... I don't know, hats, there we go. So please, you loved our hats. Um, to, see, you know, to see Jess in her hat, follow her at, something like that. The key is, it is important to ask. And uh, I think for me, I always felt much better about asking when I thought about what I gained from reviews. I don't read a review from someone that someone has left about an, a professional and think, crikey, that professional was arrogant for putting that review on. I look at what's been said and think, oh, that's really cool. That's really interesting. That's useful information for me. And that's what we want. It's not to kind of promote our own self-importance at all. It's to help our customers make the right decision for them. And if you can reframe it that way, I think that can be really, really useful in taking it to the next kind of level in your mind about it not being icky and weird and needy and arrogant, but it being a useful service to your customers if you can provide them with that extra information. Now, when it comes to an influencer point of view, how does the testimonial review endorsement side work? Well, I'd be looking to speak to people that you've worked with and ask them for a few words about you. Now, the benefit of this is it can help to show that strengthening of that connection through your social, through your Instagram, obviously that's social, through your blog, I mean. Um, but it does also give you the opportunity to potentially work with other brands. Although, if you've got brand X that says that makes boots and brand Y, who also makes boots, is looking at the testimonial, they know that you work with them now. And some people might say, well, that's just restricting my audience. But I would say, but is it? Would you want to work with two directly conflicting brands? And I would hope the answer for that would be no, um, because generally that's not how things go well. Um, 
So it might even help people self-select a bit more about whether they want to work with you or not, or whether they want to follow you or start to engage with you and wait for an opportunity. But asking people to leave testimonials to put some information about what it's like to work with you. You could also do the same and maybe you could do something similar. Maybe you can do like blogs or vlogs or whatever about how it's like, you know, the relationship you've built, why you enjoy working with each other, how you work with each other and do it that way. Because whilst a testimonial is traditionally a typed up thing, it doesn't have to be. It can be a vlog, it can be a live, it can be a reel, it can be anything you want it to be, an audio, an audio. It can be anything that you want it to be. So don't be restricted. Don't think it's arrogant. Don't think it's it's cocky and, uh, and icky for asking. Think about the value it brings to the people who are going to read it and what information you're going to be shedding to them, shedding light on for them. I hope that's been useful. Hopefully it's going to encourage a lot more people to be getting out and asking people for reviews. Don't make it so, you know, you're on their case all the time. I think asking is absolutely fine, but you don't want to become an absolute pain in the neck either. Um, so asking is fine. I think as well, when you ask, it's nice if you can, if you know, if you can possibly, to relate it specifically to them and the product or service they have bought or used from you. Because then, again, it does make them feel like it's not just a, a scattergun approach you've gone for everybody. You've been quite strategic and specific with what you've done. I hope that's been useful. Please do screenshot and share to stories if you've tuned in. And if you want more information about how to help support and grow your business, please do check out Smaller Supercharged Mastermind over at reafreemanpr.co.uk. This is my small business membership group that provides masterclasses in mindset and marketing each month, along with weekly lives, free stock imagery to use, free, that's free photography, social media critiques for different for one member a month that everyone can share, loads of social media ideas and the most incredible support network of people in the equestrian and rural space that I reckon you might ever find. Go and check that out at reafreempr.co.uk and if you've got any questions please do reach out to me and I will do my best to answer them for you. Thank you very much for joining me today, take care and we'll catch up next week.